Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Kaminsky. I am the chief scientist for Recursion Ventures. Uh, long story short, we fix stuff. Uh, what kind of stuff? Kind of whatever we want to fix. Um, <laughs> uh, usually, I work on security technologies, so uh, I did a lot of work on DNS. I've done stuff with TCP IP. I have this huge research project in trying to make it easy to write secure websites. But none of this is what I am here to talk to you about today. I'm here to talk to you about a very strange project that began in Taiwan after seeing the Star Trek movie. <laughs> so, one of the guys I saw the Star Trek movie with was colorblind, and I said, Oh really? So what did you think of the green girl? And he's like, There was a green girl? I just thought she was tan, like, you know? <laughs> How did that happen? Now this actually, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, color blindness affects about 5% of the male population, 0.5% of the female population, and uh, I thought I kind of understood how it worked. You go into Photoshop, you set it to lab color, you go to the A channel, which describes red versus green, you set that to 50% gray, and you've got a great colorblind simulation. Turns out there's a little problem. Um, who here likes being wrong? I love being wrong, because that means the world is more interesting than I thought. I go ahead and I put this view, like, here's orange, what do you think it is? Well, it's lighter, it could be green or red. Like, what do you mean green or red? What happened to yellow? That's the color in the middle. So let's talk about how color vision actually works. Visible light represents light between 700, and, 700 nanometer and 420 nanometer. We have sensors for red, green, and blue. Now we think of these as totally different colors, but when you actually look at the photoreceptors, there is 90% overlap between red and green, only 35 nanometers separating them. What kind of crazy system would have evolved this kind of 90% overlap in sensors? According to Mark Chainsey, really smart guy, if you look at oxygenated blood, you have a trough right at green and a peak right at red, and those peaks are not there when the blood is deoxygenated. So his argument is, hey, this is cheap pulse oximetry. It is a way of detecting the health of people we have to look at. And the actual spectral data is actually pretty, com pretty, uh, pretty compelling. So the nonlinear response actually comes from the fact that we are sending the difference between red and green to the brain. Well, if you're sending a difference, and you're already at 90%, when the actual similarity in color blindness is at like 95, 98%, red and green sensors are seeing about the same thing. So how do we fix it? Well, I thought we could just like apply an inverse transformation. That didn't work. Um, and it's actually great testing people, because the colorblind person is always right. So what does it? There is a color space called HSV. And you split color into what's the strongest color, hue, what's the ratio color, saturation, and what's the overall brightness. I conjecture that there is a HSV layer in the brain. And my proof is, this image on the left has 255 separate hues. This image on the right has seven. Can you guys see a difference? Somewhere in our brain, there is something that just says, well, it's close enough. It's a blue. So what I did was actually apply quantization to the hue channel. So I say, I'm going to make all reds the same red, all yellows the same yellow, and all greens kind of a bluish green, because that was the complaint a lot of uh, colorblind people had about stoplights. And if you're colorblind, theoretically, this is the Ishihara test. This goes ahead and sets saturation value constant and just changes hue. For most people I test with, they can see nothing in the left, they can see things in the right. Who here is actually colorblind? Wow. Oh yeah, it's shocking. So hey, uh, is this actually working for you? Because I can't be wrong, or I can't be right, only you can. Awesome! So this is actually, by the way, what also works is saturation seems to matter. If you go ahead and you really jack up the saturation and then you apply inverse transformation, yeah, things seem to work as well. I cannot describe how many things don't, but that does. So, what do we do with this? <laughs> the greatest augmented reality iPhone app of all time. <laughs> so that's coming out in a few weeks. Don't tell anyone this 
this off the record, please don't tweet it. Um, but yeah, if you're colorblind, I told you she was green. <laughs>